And, Let's uh, go. Guys, Argy Lantani in the house today. To the fight fans out there, no introduction needed. Hopefully. Non-fight fans out there. Uh, he's a professional MMA fighter. Fights for one championship. And the most successful Malaysian fighter to date. One of the most. If you want to be modest. Yeah, let's, let's be modest. Let's be nice. How you doing, bro? Uh, not bad, bro. Let me ask you something. Bro. Go ahead. I, I've got a question for you. How good is this kid, Johan? How much potential does he have and how far can this kid go? The 17-year-old Muay Thai fighting Malaysian prodigy. I like to be honest, so I'll be honest. In my opinion, mm. the sky is the limit for him. But the division that he fights in is a very dangerous division. As a fights fan... Bantam, right? No, a fly. fly. Okay. Fly. And he's still growing. You need to know that. He's so he might, young, yeah, yeah. Like, when I started in one, I was fighting at 77 kilos. And now I'm fighting at 83.9. And I started, I was 19 years old, you know? Yeah, it's so a natural might, yeah, it's a growth natural, up. Yeah, even Christian Lee did that. He used to fight at 65. And now he's fighting in my division. It was 55? 65, I thought it was 55. 65. Lightweight is 65. No, he fought at featherweight. His first ever loss was to Martin Nguyen. Okay, the okay. featherweight champion. Yeah, yeah. And then after that, he moved on to lightweight and yeah. he beat Shinya And yeah, then yeah. recently, last year, he just moved to my division and he beat the champion in my division, which is Kiamran Abasov, the yes. guy that I fought as well. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, let's get back to Johan. So, in Johan's case, I think um, the sky is the limit. Obviously, mm. at the moment, the record that he has in one is... is The last one was pretty surprising. It was, bro. Tabares, uh, Edgar... Tabare. Mm. But the previous ones, we know not all the guys he fought was like as dangerous as we thought it is. Um, just the just point want to point it out there. So the dude he fought at Tabares, yeah, um, had just fought maybe two fights ago with Rod, was in the ring with Rod Tang, uh, yeah, Muay Thai legend, and he lasted two rounds before getting uh, TKO'd, yeah. So yeah, second round, yeah. Yeah, so it was a bit surprising that. Uh, he finished him earlier. Yeah, that Johan finished him in thirty seconds, bro. Yeah. Uh, what, it was pretty much you would say a, a basic combination. I think he threw it yeah, twice. Yeah, uh, the same combination. The first one he checked. Yeah. The kick, and then he followed up with the two and a three to the uh, three to the body. Second time he did the same thing and he caught him clean. Yeah. And he just dropped. What What is it about this the fight game, bro? Like sometimes you can you can go you can bang it out for three rounds, five rounds straight and yeah. no one gets finished. No one gets knocked out and sometimes a, a young kid, a prodigy like Johan just shows up, exerts dominance and yep. finishes the dude like... What what happened? Bro? Style makes fights, right? Mm. So, we all know that... So, let's just put it like this. Edgar Tavares mm. is not like a very big Muay Thai guy. The, the thing about Muay Thai you need to know there's world champions at every corner you look. It's, it's quite like easy for you to become a world champion. Is it like boxing? Or even no, more? boxing is harder. Okay. Yeah, boxing is harder because the promotions buy the belts. Yes. And then they, or the people who wants to have that belt have to pay the sanctions to use the belt, right? Yeah, yeah. Usually. So like, for example, like Tyson Fury has three belts or two, one belt, I think. I think if you complete the whole, you, you, you collect you all four of them belts. four. Four belts. Yeah, okay. So you only have four belts. But Muay Thai is not like that. Every event has their own belt and they can use it WMC World Champion. Mm, got you. Yeah. So my previous coach mm. was an I1 WMC World Champion. And then the coach previously also was an I1 WMC World Champion. Mm. And he went on to become Omnoy Champ WMC World Champion. Then so I brought in a guy to train with me. He was WMC World Champion. So you're saying that he had those championship belts came from um, you had to fight one time in that promotion and you became a champion? Yeah, that's how it works in, in, in with Muay Thai, right? It okay. becomes easier for you to access a belt mm. in Muay Thai. Even when you fight in Malaysia and if people want to buy the WMC world champion title, they can buy it. <laughs> yeah, so we know that uh, Edgar Tavares has only fought in the in the local scene in Mexico. Mm. Oh. Is it? Hmm? Yeah, I think so. There's not many <laughs> fights. See, I think his first ever exposure to really skilled full Thai fighters was Rotang and that's the yeah, Elias, uh, like the main guy to fight in Ro in Muay Thai right and then yeah. Elias Mahmoudi right after then Rotang uh, and I, uh, then Johan I think by the time we came to Johan and Johan probably a smart guy we have more exposure to Muay Thai than anyone else we are right next door yeah 
Yeah. The location yeah, of our country. Yeah, and then his coach is Thai. I'm pretty sure the coach will be like, I'm going to read this guy. I said, yeah, read. I know what you need to do. Just do it. And he did it. And he even did mention that they, they're going to read everyone that they're going to fight. So they're not just going blindly training six, seven, eight rounds, sparring. No, they, they, they're they smart guys too. You know, They're not dumb. Okay. Yeah. yeah they did their research. Or they did yeah, their so game plan. Yeah. So most likely, their game plan <clears throat> worked out well. And yeah. they got the 30 second finish. After the fight, on the mic, he mentioned that... Um, He's going to take his time. Take, take his time but he even um, he made a bold statement he said mark my words um, I want to be a world champion probably in uh, one championship by the age of 20 which is in three years time I think that's a good uh, goal right yeah I think I think to be honest you need to have that that kind of goal if you, if you don't want to have a goal in, mm. in a promotion like this what you're you doing there. Yeah, what you're doing there, right? Yeah. Like I say, a lot of people previously used to start with the bad reasons, you know? Yep. I think when I was doing it, I was the only guy who said I want to be a world champion. All the other guys like, okay, like, I don't want to name call people, but for example, the guys that we speak about earlier, yep. they were not even, they didn't even have the intention of saying, oh, I will see where it goes, they say. And I'm like, what? I was like, bro, this is your chance, bro. The promotion is brand new. If you become a champion, your name is going to be there in the history of the promotion on the other side of it as well if you are not there to be the best yeah and you're not all in right risking everything yeah it's a very dangerous profession to be in you're yeah. literally fighting to put food for on the table, on the table for yeah. you and yeah. your family, family yeah. and cte brain damage right most likely yeah uh you 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 take you take damage over time um I don't think so. It's as bad as you think, class. It is. If boxing, yeah, maybe but MMA, you go to the ground, you know. There's a lot of fights that gets boring as well. We move around a lot because of the small gloves. Let's talk about that then. Okay, boxing is more... Din- okay, so far right, in history, there's been more recorded deaths in boxing yeah. than MMA. Yeah. Right? And then to the casual people listening, they probably think like, oh, in MMA, you can use elbows, you can use uh, kicks... Yeah. You can grapple, you can strangle people and it's five minute rounds instead of three minutes. But why is there more deaths in boxing where you can only use your fists and there are three minute rounds? And they have more they are they have more rounds too. They have, they, they have more rounds. Yeah, yeah, sorry. They have more rounds yeah. too. Um it's very simple. It's not hard, right? Mm-hmm. You only have one tool, yep. and you only have very minimal part of the bodies that you can hit. Mm. And you want to hit the place where you can get the most value for your money, which is the head. <laughs> so yeah. you're gonna go hit hard the head. Yeah. So that's one of the reasons why you're gonna get more deaths in boxing. And people, you cannot hold the guy. If you hold the guy, the referee is gonna step separate yeah. you. Yeah. And then even when you hold the guy, some guys will still tend to swing, and it will end up hitting at the back of the head. Then the referee can only say, "Hey, warning, warning, warning!" But if you turn again and I hit you, it happens. I guess in MMA they they would. Uh, eventually take a point now. They'll take a point and if they give you another card then you disqualify the fight stops. Yeah. yeah, we have more rules to control the outcome of the negative stuff that you do in the cage. Also another reason why I think this is an important factor like why there are more deaths in boxing is because you get knocked down once. Yeah, you get you're, 10 counts. You're given 10 seconds to get back up on your feet. So this is um, I think a lot of people know in boxing one Two, the referee counts up till 10. If you're back on your feet and you look like you're, you've got your hands up like this, he'll let you go again. again. Yeah. And if you are, and the truth is, if you get knocked down and you need five, six, seven, eight seconds to get back up on your feet, you are concussed badly. Yeah. So if you go back into uh, the fight, chances are you are not in the best state to compete with that dude that just knocked you down, right? Yep. Then you get knocked down another time. And then when you get knocked down the third time, only then they, they will... stop you, yeah. Yes, they will stop the fight. And I think it's three knockdowns in one round. One round, yeah. So you can actually get knocked down five times in a fight. Or, yeah. s- or six or seven. You can get knocked down every time once in in the, <laughs> the whole fight. Like, then it'll be 12 times. <laughs> I think that's a big reason why there's more deaths yeah, in yeah, the yeah, sport yeah. of boxing. And also, like, the boxers, after they fight... Not everyone is like going to go and see a doctor or chill out at home for a couple of weeks or a couple of months. You mm. know, they want to get back to it because, like, like we always say, only one percent of the sports 
is making the top money. Is it one percent? What you? I think it might it's be less. Less, less right? yeah, might be less. Even in MMA, it's the same. Let, bro, let's let's backtrack, lah. Um, just now you you talked about how the moment you set eyes on this sport, you yeah. wanted to be champion. Assume I know nothing, lah. I actually don't know anything apart okay. from the kid from Sento. Okay. How did you get into this crazy sport, and why, bro? Why? Um, at first, when I got into the sports, it was just like an influence of somebody doing it, right? Like, for Ooh. example, my coach, uh, my first ever coach, Samir, the owner of Monarchy. I've heard about Samir. Yeah. So Samir was my main coach, and he fought. And then after he fought in one championship, uh, I still remember March 13, two thousand thirteen. I think. You know, October thirteen, two thousand thirteen. So you were, uh, you're about a year younger than me. You were eighteen. Sorry, the no, map. I was seventeen, turning eighteen yeah. that year. And you just finished SPM high school. I finished SPM and I was working as a cleaner in that gym for one year already. So did you have interest in the sport? That's why you chose to work in the gym, or you just you wanted to find a job? No, I had interest in the sports the previous year before. I already started training with them. When I was while I was doing my SPM or the year of SPM form five, ah, uh. form five, and then when I finished SPM, my dad was like, "Oh, you can go and train again." And he paid for one month, and then the following month, I just asked for a job because they were expanding. Mm. They were opening a real branch in the city center, the Wisma MPL one. True. Yeah, and then I just joined work, and Wait, what was I the name of it. that gym? Sorry, Monarchy MMA. Oh, there was Monar- Monarchy from the yeah, okay from, from the yeah, very yeah, beginning. Yeah, from the very beginning, and then. Uh, At that time, Suba brothers, you know, Jani yeah. and Suba, and they were like the biggest influence in the gym. And Jani fought in one championship first. Is Jani older or Kianu? Jani is older. Kianu is the younger okay. one. Okay. Yeah. Kianu is, is uh, one year younger than one year older than me. Kianu. Kianu. Yeah, right? he's still actively fighting. Yeah, he fought yeah. start of the year. Yeah. Yeah. And then, from then on, we went to. Uh, I worked in the gym. I worked in the gym because. I wanted to lose weight too. That's one of the reasons. Because I was, I was, I was like, hundred. I was hundred thirty four starting of my SPM year. Kgs. Kgs, and then what? Before my SPM finish, I was already like hundred twenty two. That's me going to school, not having like, don't know anything about dieting, mm. don't know like calorie protein. What bullshit. did you do to lose that weight? I was just training. I was going like three to four times a week every evening, just to grapple and do boxing. But bro, I. What got you? How did you first find out about MMA? Uh, do you know the movie called SPL, Donnie Yen's movie? SPL, yeah. I didn't know it. Man, now Sha Po Long. So you should go watch that movie. It's called uh. SPL or or Flashpoint. I've heard about that. I can't. Yeah. I don't know. You should go watch the last scene where he fights with this bad guy, mm. and he finishes the fight in a real naked choke mm. position. And then I was like, "Wow, this is so cool!" And then I was like, "Oh, let's go watch the." Go read more about this. Mm. Then at that time, Donnie Yen was like, "Oh, Johnny Yen was a purple belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu." Is he really? Yeah, uh, it was written in Wikipedia, <laughs> la. So I was like, "Okay, I'll go press on it and I watch." And I was like, and then from then I learned like, "Oh, this is Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. If you learn this, you can strangle people like this." And at that time, I was doing karate, you know, and bro, I, I didn't like karate because. Yeah, I, I was fat. I couldn't move as fast as I wanted to. Wait, wait, when when did you start karate? Thirteen years old. Oh, you did karate for you already. Had... I was already doing karate, but I wasn't like losing weight. I was just being fat two times a day, <laughs> go two times a week, go to karate class. What sort of karate did you? Compete? I was doing the one where yeah, I did compete. I, I lost, but yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, the point, point karate. Point system. Point the the one that Malaysian team has. Uh, Malaysia has a national team that's mm. actually very good and legit. I think not uh, sure. Not sure. I, I'm not sure or not sure. I'm no, I'm, sure. Not, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not educated on karate uh, so, in so Malaysia. <laughs> I think it's called. Uh, there's a lot of Indian guys, man. They're quite famous for this. Mm, okay. Who's doing it? And and I went to one of the guy who's like, the head coach's brother, mm. uh, Hayashi the Ha. It, the eight team, basically. Yeah, the eight yeah. team. Yeah, like yeah, I went to A-team. train. I went to train with them, oh. and it was not nice because they would beat the shit out of me, and they not only beat the shit out of me because like. Who, You uh, young, yeah. you scared, you know. Sometimes you don't know what okay. you're doing. You get beat But up. But you stuck around though. In karate, yeah, four years. Uh, yeah, you, they beat the shit up, shit out of you. You still kept coming back though. Why? I don't know. I I feel like I'm getting bullied anyway, so I was like, oh, might as well take. You're talking know, about go. outside of. Yeah, outside karate. and inside both ways. You're talking about in school. Yeah, Just verbal abuse is like the every day. 
You no still, way. But you still came back, man. Um, every day you showed up in, uh, to karate's class, but you eventually quit. Karate and left to the gym because the gym had boxing classes where... The not monarchy, you mean? No, ah, yeah. Mm. Because it was like, oh, if I punch the guy mm. and he punched me back, we don't have to stop and reset. We can punch each other back again. Which is... That is Which actually, is more realistic, you know. I was like, oh, it's much more nicer. <laughs> so that's what happened in karate. Uh. Karate is like always like, oh, I hit you. Yeah. And then if I don't scream or I don't retract, I don't get points. Uh, that sounds very, sounds very weird to me. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> if I go like, Pum! and I cannot hit you full force. I have to control it. I just have to snap you and bring it back. And then once once you score the point, they'll stop you. And then you restart again in the middle. But people get knocked out in karate, don't they? Yeah, sometimes. At the, at the pro level now, yeah, it's happening. But when you are at my age, 13 years old doing it, it's a snap. Okay. You come back. But when I was 16 years old in monarchy... Well, I was like going hard with people. Like people used to beat me up. Like older men will beat the shit out of me. MMA or boxing? Boxing. Yeah, like older men. Like Okay. Like yeah. and, and I used to be training with like these Russian kids who used to go to Sergi College, which was down the road in yeah. Masijame and yeah. Rajeshulan. They are trained. They, they, they will come and they just beat me up, bro. Like the guy will go Amba full on on me and I'll be like, I will tap and I say, Tap and then after that I have to do an extra tap. Tap, 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 tap. And then they let it go And I was like Oh shit And I like Popped my hands I'm like We learned that way How long did you train for Until you got your You actually Wanted to take your first fight So I trained 16 years old Yeah and Then I started working Monarchy 17 years old Finishing 17 and a half eight, 18 At that year end I saw Samir fight By the end of that year I already started fighting One, My first ever amateur fight mm. Just a and local had, Yeah And then before that I had two kickboxing fights as well uh, two kickboxing fights, one amateur fight. You know ideal golden boy Hafiz? He did the podcast. Adli. Oh, yeah, yeah, Adli. Yeah. Adli, sorry, my bad. <laughs> yeah. He's, yeah. He used to... He used to be a heavyweight. No, no, he used to be at a uh, middleweight. Yeah. And I fought my first ever kickboxing fight with him. And I beat him. Oh, against him, you mean? Yeah, against him. And he was already like an amateur boxer with so many fights. And that was my first ever introduction to kickboxing fight. Yeah. I did not know that, bro. Yeah, I even have a picture in my Facebook. It's probably uh, a video on YouTube. No, they removed oh. it. Uh, um, and that's where I got my nickname. Because I was playing Adli Golden Boy Hafiz. Back then, his ring name was The Raging Bull. Okay, I didn't Adli know The too. Raging Bull uh, Hafiz. Yeah. And the promotion owner, Melvin Yo, the owner of Ultimate Beatdown, he was like, "Oh, let's give this kid name the Alligator." So it sounds. Wait, so you didn't choose that name? No, I didn't choose. The, 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 those guys gave it to me. Okay. That's how I got my name. I fought him in a kickboxing fight. He he blasted my face a couple of times, but I just like grind it out, kick his legs a couple mm. of times, swing a couple of hooks, and I won the fight. Oh, bro, you can remember, huh? bro, very well. Of course, bro. Yeah. Okay. Wow. I forgive, uh, but don't forget, huh? Yeah. Yeah. So earlier, remember you were talking about you. You went into the you went to the gym and there are different lots of different type of people that show up at an MMA gym. Yeah. Some want to do it for leisure. Some. Some want to compete. Yeah. Some people, um, maybe not some, or maybe a, a couple, a, 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 a few in, in, in the world, they want to be the best that they can yep. be. And that was you. Kind of. What, but wh- why, what, what gave you the confidence, bro? You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. Maybe, well, would you say it's ignorance or a dream? or? I don't think it's confidence, right? I think uh, the more I stuck around, the more I don't see why I should leave kind of thing. Like, say, I stay here so long. Like, why, I, 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 Bro, I come out of SPM. I didn't even bother to study. My dad is a bankruptcy. We have no extra cash to go and mm. pursue other education. Mm. And I want to apply PTPTN, so I have less than two credits. Back then, you need to have a minimum of three credits. And my dad was trying to get me a job with this Maserati car dealership. So if I sell a car, I can become rich, you know. <laughs> and I was like, no, I'm just going to stick here and mop floors. And uh, how do you think you fare as a salesperson? I have no idea. Okay, you never... never I, I take things personally too many times. Everything kind of affects me. Like I'll be going home and I'll complain to my wife 24-7. Okay. I'll be honest about it. And then I just control it very well. I can suck it up very well, I think. I, I don't... Yeah, 
and the reason why you can suck it up very well, that has to be an accumulation of the years of being, I don't know whether physically a, a bullied, but verbally a, a yeah, bullied. Yeah, a lot. <laughs> you know, um, a lot of the people that are resilient in the gym and they keep coming back after getting beat up, they probably had some past experience, you know, trauma of getting bullied. I don't think it's trauma. La. If you grow up in an Indian household, it's common. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, That's true also. Yeah, like, we insult each other like, yeah. like it's a joke kind of thing, right? Sure. Yeah. Now I mean, only this word all came up. Back then we didn't know all this shit. You mean the you're trauma talking, word? You talking about a softer time? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah. now I cannot do the same back to my cousins. You know, they are like, they are more sensitive. You mean the younger your yeah. younger cousins? Yeah, no, no, no. Even the the older ones that used to be saying all these things now oh. they can't accept it in the same way anymore, because times has changed, right? They want to be modernized too. Something about people that get bullied, right? I I got bullied a, a little bit lah. Maybe it's not it's nothing so severe. Just uh, because I was a tall kid, right? Yeah. Tall kid, and I was I was pretty much this height by the time I was twelve. Wow. Yeah, tall kid. Um, so I stopped growing. It was a bit disappointing, you know. Oh, shit. <laughs> I might you know if you got parents telling me like, oh, you're gonna be a basketball player. Yeah, yeah. I I stopped growing at twelve. Anyways, one thing about getting uh, bullied is you you wouldn't do the same thing because you know very well how it feels. Oh, not me. I think I accidentally bully everyone. I I, I do that too. Uh, with, with buddies. Uh, uh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. I even like antagonize people for no reason sometimes. Like I say shit that's huh? mean sometimes and then like people don't understand it. So like, Have you ever been to a therapist? Uh, I don't. <laughs> I, I used to. Oh, I serious? used to go to one like after my back surgery. Mm. And I just found out like the more I think of things as a problem, the harder my life gets. So I might as well just do it and then if somebody, if I butt hurt somebody, I'll be like, hey man, sorry, I didn't mean it. My bad. <laughs> just accept it, right? <laughs> Dude, it's actually a, a thing now for, let's say UFC fighters, right? To have a, what do you call it? Um, a mental coach. Yeah, yeah, mental yeah, mental coach. coach. You need that yeah. sometimes. Um, so you said you went to a therapist before. Was it because of like a fight thing? Or? Yeah, because uh, I was having issues with my fight. A lot of issues. Like, especially... Confident issues. This one is very hard. To oh, you you also, you also did the 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 mental coach thing. Okay. Oh, yeah, I did like three sessions. Uh, After that, I was like, "Fuck this shit." This, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, because he wanted you to keep coming back, and you had to keep chucking out the money. No, no, no. Actually, it was sponsored. <laughs> but ah, okay. I don't see the. Mm. Like it was like more like, this guy is trying to remind me shit that I already know. I got you, love, bro. And then um, I was like, if if I can just be disciplined enough to remind the same shit back to myself, then I'm good. <laughs> if you recognize your own problems and you're doing yeah. something about it, it works for some people. Though. Yeah. Yeah. Some people, um, they find it useful. Not for everyone, uh. True. Yeah. Bro, let's let's get into your career, man. Okay, go ahead. Ah, uh, so who do you fight right before Ben Askren? Jeff Wang, right? Jeff Wang, yeah. Yeah, Jeff Wang. That was your six, seven fight. Six. Professional fight, professional yeah, and amateur. Fight. I think you had five to six. As five well. to six. Yeah. yeah. So, pretty much your tenth fight, lah. In in total. Yeah. yeah. And then the two kickboxing fights don't have to count, lah. You should sure. sure. Yeah. The one about Lee, yeah. Golden Boy. Aldi, uh, finally, and then another one I fought in uh, F three. You got you got good memory, man, bro. Yeah, bro. Because I have been only doing this since the time I left school. Like nothing else, I went and did like. Maybe I bought a couple of crypto trying to be a crypto guy, but I never remember <laughs> doing anything else other than um, that. So what did um did you lose a lot? I mean, sorry, not lose. I I assumed you lost. Sorry, <laughs> how did it go with crypto? So when I lost to Ben Askren, yeah. there was somebody oh. who like gave me ten thousand ringgit, but gave me in a crypto account to my ex girlfriend, saying this account is attached to his phone number. It's a Coinbase account or something, mm. with like one Bitcoin in it. A couple of pancake swaps and a JST coin. Okay. At like their most minimum value. Sure. Yeah. And then I fast forward after I lost the fight. And then, you know, the amount of, uh, you know how it is in Malaysia, right? When you lose a fight, I, I'm the kind of guy who got famous because I lost a fight. I was not I like, didn't know it was like that. In, it in was the... like that for me. It was not like how Johan is. Johan is like a guy who's winning but and he's why? becoming... Because I lost my fight to Ben Askren. After that, it became like a big hoo-ha and everybody started came to me. Before that, I didn't care what, about What did they come things. to you and say? Sorry, I, so No, I, they were like, oh, we will support you, Indian, you know, this and that. You know, <laughs> they used the the Indian card on you. And what? I'm like, I said, I didn't ask sometimes, but yeah, I appreciate it. I support you guys. But 
this, a, you sp- you sponsor me or don't sp- sponsor me the guy going to be the shit army guaranteed cuz i have i mean experience to oh, fight ban bro, bro let's uh, um so how did you find out that you're going to fight ban did you know who ban was uh, yeah 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 i know ban when i won my first three fights already in one and i was like oh man mm. oh I'm yeah yeah ban ban already defended you were the third title defense is it or of, of his can't remember we both second Second, yeah. Second. So, but he, nobody wanted to fight him for a whole year. Some context, okay. Ben Askren is um, very, very highly accomplished sil- silver Olympic medalist in wrestling. Yeah. So, um, silver. I don't think he won a medal, but he's an Olympic. Oh. No, I, <laughs> I, I hope I, I'm correct. I, because I did like a massive research on him. I think he was just like a. He he went until the semi, like the bronze medal round, then he lost. But he went to Olympics. He's but an Olympic wrestler. Before, sorry, before um, one FC, he was in Bellator. Y- bro, I want to clarify. One FC, one championship. What's what's the difference? Like, it's one called- championship is the name that the promotion is using now. One FC is what it used to be. But because of one not wanting to use fighting because of the word, right? They want to say one championship. They don't want to mention fighting. Because it uh, sounds violent. Yeah, right? because they want to deceive people into thinking that you are not watching fighting; you are watching competition. Is it? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's why it sounds like. Uh, but but we all know. I think they they don't care about it much anymore. Yeah. Um. Bro. So okay. Um. So, so I'm really not familiar with the. Yeah, I'm sure you already can tell. I'm not balls deep into one FC. I follow a lot of UFC. I I I was actually um in. Melbourne for most of my uni years. So back then, right, I when I came back, only I okay, not when I came back. Just a few days ago, I started researching one championship because I knew I'm going to do a podcast with Aguilan. Oh shit! Uh, <laughs> yeah, but uh, it was I I gained a lot more respect lah for you lah, bro. No worries, and just bro. the organization <laughs> and the fighters there lah. So, um, Ben Askren was having his. Second, he he defended the title the, the once. Title, yeah, because the first defense was against a guy who, who he what was his name? poked his eyes. Uh, Luis Sapo. San Santos. Yeah, Santos. Yeah. And then after that, he fought. He uh, poked, who poked his eye? Uh, Ben accidentally. I poked him. But he won. Uh, <laughs> no, he didn't win against Sapo. It was no contest. Oh, I see. I see. Yeah, it was no contest. I think it was no contest. And then the second time. He didn't make weight or something. Mm. Yeah, and then the third time he fought um, Alexa Alexa Hin. Aren't you the third? The you're the second. No, because the same guy he fought twice, ma. Okay. And then because they that, had to reschedule the yeah, fight. Yeah, reschedule. And then yeah. the second one is um, uh, Nikolai Alexa Hin. It's a Russian guy. Mm. And then it was me, Agil Antani. So <laughs> for one year, no one wanted to fight him. Almost a year. And you received the call. Um, I received the call six weeks before the fight, and I fought him. And what, 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 I lost. what was your immediate reaction? Or? I was very stressed. You know, I was the kind of guy who always was like, "Oh, I want to do the best training camp or the hardest training camp possible." I think, I think that's uh, most fighters. So uh, most I fighters, but yeah. but you know, I was like more like wanting the most toughest guys around me because I was traveling to the US a lot. I think in no, my even mind, back even back then yeah back then I already oh. like my first pro fight I already start making the move to the states every single time Which I gym, had the opportunity uh, did you go to then I was training with Sh- Sean Strickland back then no fucking yeah. way bro that was my first ever uh, time to America and I was training with Sean Strickland is it extreme Kotu? no Sorry, back then we were all in Team Quest Temecula chill son and uh, yeah gym. he was there yeah but it was Dan Henderson's gym okay 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 bro you. So I was you, there. Like you can scroll my Instagram. It's always there. Two thousand what? Two thousand and four. Yeah, fifteen. Yeah, that was the first that's year. That's Sean. Did Sean Strick? Did you manage to train with him? Bro, I was sparring Sean Strickland on a regular basis for a whole year. How is he, bro? And he. So, so this is something you can take away from him, right? And, and I still have a video of him complaining that I hook kick him in the nose <laughs> and made him bleed, and he yeah. got so pissed off, and he actually wanted to like. Kill me, bro! And the gym had to like separate us, and he still till this day he comes up. I still have the video, and he say like, uh, uh, wherever you came from, Aguilan, whatever did I do to you? You deserve it. There, I have a video. No, no, hey, bro! I, oh my god, I'm starstruck right now, guys. 
Context. Uh, Sean Strickland is the current UFC middleweight champion, okay? And he is a real character. But this is 2021. Yeah, he what? sent it to me in 2021. <laughs> yeah, but I used to train with him back. But, but, let, let me, but let me ask you something about Sean Strickland. Because people think he's crazy and he talks a lot of shit and says a lot of wild things, right? But I look see him as... I think he's just a very funny guy, man. I think a lot of people don't get it that like... Just because I say it doesn't mean my actions will be the same. You know, I think he's an embodiment of that. It's like, mm. if I talk shit and say, hey man, I'm going to beat the shit out of you. Yeah, please don't. Then, yeah. I won't, right? <laughs> you know that. You know that for yeah. it. But if you're on the mats and you're going to have a fight, I have to show you what's up just for your own betterment, right? Like, I'm of like, course. I have to push you, man. Because like, yeah. you're going to go into a fight and like... That guy's not going to hold back. Yeah. I have guys in my gym, they'll be saying like, oh, he's my friend. I will hold my punch. I'm like, bro, the guy will try to kill you, man. Yeah, the, you want to help him out or yeah. you want him to get beat up by and someone else? And they won't get this until now. They're trying to be this nice, humble guy. Say, hey, shake my hand. I was like, bro, what are you doing? You, but you can shake hands after you're done training. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> after that, you be friends. Like, whatever you want to do. But before yeah. you fight, you don't need to you're be trying friend. to get more, more people to go to your gym, bro. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't scare them. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, um, I was 19 years old when I first part Sean Strickland. And I think Sean Strickland KO'd me like... What the fuck? When I was like 20 years old. After I came back from Ben Askeren's fight. So I went back to him and he KO'd me one time with a body shot. He oh, yeah. suplexed me once on my neck. And like I couldn't turn my neck for a couple of weeks while I was in the US. No. And yeah, it's hard, man. After the sparring and whatever, he's actually a, a chill dude. Is that yeah, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He talks. He, he he just loves to trash talk. He, no, 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 no. He's just like that ninety percent of the time. He's just just him. Yeah, it is, it's it's fun. very hard for people to accept. But he's, he 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 have no bad intentions for you. Mm. Yeah. So he got the better of you. Always. 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 No way I can beat him. The X kick that he talks about that I hook that I showed you the yeah, video the hook right? Kick, right? Yeah. yeah, the hook kick. It was probably my lucky day because I accidentally did it and it hit his nose when he was standing right in front of me. But okay. after that, like so many times he knocked me up. But you see, I did that. The gym have to separate us. Like we literally want to bash each other up. And we came back the next day. And we went rounds again. And he beat me up again. And it happens. And you see, like we can punch each other and it's fine. And he used to say this. The world needs to understand men can beat each other up and still be friends. Bro, he was he's saying that shit now and people think that... He, it's stupid, uh, but he used to say that back then. Dude, <laughs> dude like... Uh, a lot of people in Malaysia don't understand this. They think if I hit you hard, I have bad intentions for you. But that's the name of the game. I have to hit you to make you understand yeah. this danger. <laughs> yeah. um, but I guess there's also this other school of thought uh, where you know how Max talks about um, no sparring in the training camp. Yeah, but, but he says it, but you go and see, he go to Elite Hawaii and uh, he spars everybody. So it doesn't... Yeah, you, you everybody... Don't, you can, think it's, it's, it's I camp, don't think or? so. I don't think... No, you, there are camps that you don't spar. There are camps that you need to spar. There are some people who spar for certain camps. Some people, they don't spar. Like my last camp, I doesn't, didn't spar as much as I should do. Mm. Should Injury, have. is it? Or no, because like, uh, I didn't have enough bodies to work with yeah. for my fight. So I have to like Sharif kinda, is it Sharif, What's his name? The the last the last opponent. The last one is uh, Murat Kasaev. Kasaev, yeah. So for Kasaev, I did my camp here in KL, mm. and I didn't have much bodies, and I had lighter guys and heavier guys, and I cannot go a wall on them because I need them for the whole camp. Okay. So I have to save them. So I yeah. do the standing rounds much more simpler, lighter sparring. Yeah. And that one also sometimes I cannot control. You get emotional and like I have my. My guy called Jay Chong and another guy called Abdul Rahman. Mm. Bro, when they hit me hard, I get pissed off. I will hit them back hard. Sometimes accidentally drop them. With I a wouldn't kick dare or something. hit you hard if I was them. <laughs> no, they, they, they have to, you know, yeah, and I will force to. them. And it happens. And some camps need to, some camps don't have to. Okay, um, let's go back to Banner Screen. Okay, go. Yeah. So, but the States, man, you you've, you regularly, yeah. you regularly, regularly travel. Yeah, yeah, travel to the States. Um, Who else was in that? Sean, Sean Strickland? Uh, Sam Elvey? Sam Alvey, yeah. Sam Alvey. Yeah, smiling uh, Sam Alvey. Do you know who's Romeo Sokoju? Sorry? Sokoju. Sokoju, no, man. Um, okay. Sokoju he didn't fight in like, the UFC, did he? he? He used to fight in the UFC. He used oh. to fight against Machida. He got KO'd by Machida. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. And then, um, uh, right now, Jared Vandera. He's in the yeah, UFC. Know, the heavyweight yeah, guy. Heavyweight guy. And then, um, 
Uh, Christopher Curtis was there. Chris Always Curtis. was there. Chris, Chris Curtis. Yeah, yeah. Chris I Curtis. I spar Chris all the time. Yeah, but Chris, he was oh. the most nicest guy I've spar. I think he did. He uh, even on camera is always a nice dude. Though. Yeah, yeah, he's super nice. So Chris and Sean Strickland, who are now they're always buddies yeah, on yeah, camera. Yeah. They've they, been they buddies were, a long time. Then. Yeah, yeah, we we were all been, they were buddies with Sam Alvey. Sam Alvey was the main guy. Sam Alvey is the guy who brought yeah. Chris Curtis to California. Yeah, to help him out for his camps or to do his camps there. And Chris Curtis used to stay in Sam Alvey's house, with me along, side with them. That's and that's how know. I got to know all of these guys. Yeah. And I used to train with Dan, Dan <clears throat> Henderson. Yeah, uh, that's a former UFC champion, guys. Legend. Yeah, in yeah. case you all don't know. Yeah, yeah legend as well. For it's like 2015, 2016, and then 2017. After that only, I start hopping gyms. Yeah. You mean and, in the States, is yeah, it? Yeah, in the, in the States. And because... So you went every year? Every year. Some years I managed to go twice. Some years I managed to only go once. That's, bro, so... You know, I I try I fund my own travels because yes. the money that I make from fighting. Yep. And back then I was staying with my ex. We split the rent like seven hundred ringgit. She mm. paid three fifty. I paid three fifty. Yeah. And I had no commitments, no car, no bike, nothing. Yeah, that's the and, way. Uh, yeah, that's the way I had yeah. to live. Like for so many you, years. You all in, bro. Everything. Yeah, everything. Yeah. One thing also that um I wanted to to bring up, uh, bro, for the fighters over here, right? Yeah. Um, a Im- really important way for you to to be the best prepared as you can, right, is you have to have the best training partners as well. And you understood that from the very beginning and you invested in it. True, I invested in it. But I think you also need proper guidance yeah. and people around you that wants the best for you so you can work together. That's the only way you can form a community where you can build the sports. If you always think like, oh, it's not worth it or I'm not going to make enough money or why he can win the money and I cannot win the money then you're all going to go down. You're all going to go sunking down the ship. This is not going to work out. And now I run this pro team and I always scold these guys and I say, it's like, man, there's no money. You fight in for no reason, but if you want to go to the top, it has to start here. You have to be there for him and he has to be here for you and you all have to be here for me and I have to be here for the for you guys. Yeah, for no you. money. For no money. Yeah. And and I run the whole pro team for no money. Me and Keanu does, do it for no money. I, I mean, if they want to uh, join your gym, they got to pay some money. <laughs> no. So, you want to join the normal classes? Yeah, uh. you pay. We have another thing that we do every morning at 9.30 uh-huh. to 11 for no money for only a group of guys that we think that is good the enough. The active to fighters. Uh. Not even active fighters. Some guys who just do it as a hobbyist, but they're regularly showing But they want them. to. Or they want to. Got yeah. you. Yeah, so every every year you would go over um to the states. Um, I think my last trip was on twenty twenty one. After that, I never go bro, because what, my uh, wife is pregnant. <laughs> uh, yeah, bro. Congrats on having your first child. Uh. Yeah, thank he's you. a year, right? A year. He's old? a year now. Yeah. Okay. Um. No, oh, I still want to talk about that, man. Uh, <laughs> Don't the, worry, the just new, ask. The new, the newfound motivation. But anyways, okay. Yeah, back back to the states first. What, 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 what else did you enjoy like, apart from? It, it, I mean, not just the gym, uh. So my trip to the States wasn't as pleasant as other people. You need to know that. Because, oh, no, no, no. It yeah. can be the simple things. The food. Uh, I think the people. The food, yes. I enjoy. Mm. Um, You're a fast food guy? Yeah. I'm a big fast food guy. What, I cannot live without McDonald's in, uh, in Malaysia. Yeah. You didn't? Did you go to like In-N-Out? Other? Yeah, of course. I ate In-N-Out. I ate Chipotle. I ate mm. like... Uh, I've also been to the South and I ate like Bojangles and all those things over there. Um, I think... Uh, I don't know if you know what Habit Burger is. Habit? Habit Burger. It's only nah. in California. So yeah. that's one of the places that I used to like. Mm. It's like okay. $9 burger, but it's good. La. $9? Is, is it pricey? For yeah, it's pricey. It's pricey for... In and out, it's like only 3 to 4 bucks. 3 to 4 bucks for a set or a burger? Just a burger. Just a burger. The double-double. Yeah. Double. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I, I I know that um McDonald's there is popular for having big big amount of fries portion. Yeah, you can like uh, supersize it, right? But yeah. And then it's it's not the same anymore. I don't think all the outlets have it. Mm. You need to go specific outlets. Um, are you are you by any chance a party guy? No, I don't no, party. Um, yeah. Uh, well, um, it's, it's not easy like, to balance that type of lifestyle and do yeah, what you do. Yeah, if I party, then you know, I would be like worse, I think. Yeah, you know who's, who's, a, who's an outlier? John Jones. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, John Jones... Uh, some would I've say. trained with him in uh, not with him in his gym as well yeah. in Jackson Wing. This I saw twenty twenty one. Yeah, I saw that was last year. But did you manage to meet him? Yeah, I meet him in person. Yeah, he was there. He was hitting pads and he was on his bulking season, going to heavyweight. for heavyweight. Yeah. 
And he never trained with everyone. Like, he just comes in, he does his own thing yeah. with the coaches specifically and then he leaves. Yeah, It's crazy to think that he's been in the game so long but he's yeah. a couple of years older than you only. I'll say 30. Yeah, he started very young. He's 34, I think, yeah. this year. 28, yeah, six years older. Yeah, six years, six years older. Yeah. yeah, but it seems like forever. Yeah. One thing is good is in that gym, they really have that, that community where everybody push each other. In uh, uh, Jackson, Jackson Wing. Wing. Yeah. And then I was living in the dorms there, right? So mm. it was like really high walk with these guys. They all get high, smoke weed. It's a normal thing there for yeah, all the fighters, yeah. bro. Do they train and smoke? Yeah, they train and then they smoke. Some guys... No, no, I mean, do they, sorry, do they smoke and train? Yeah, some guys do that. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They the guys of... who want to grapple, they will always do that. Okay, that's what I heard as well. Like yeah. grappling, they would do it, but uh, striking maybe not. Uh, striking is a bit... You should hit bags when you are high. It's really good, actually. Yeah, right. It's really good, actually. <laughs> yeah. that, that is the best level. Like you will feel your gloves touching the bag with the impact. Sometimes you can actually adjust your technique a little more when you're yeah, high. Yeah, because yeah, Because you're yeah. slowing things down, you know? Yeah. Okay, so back backtrack to Ben Ben Askren. Okay, you got the call. Okay, yeah. six weeks. Six weeks before. Yeah. You stressed out? Yeah, bro, very stressed out because I just came back from the States because I was in South Carolina mm? trying to stay there and train, but the gym that I went to wasn't the, the kind of environment I expected, you know? It was quite harsh, the environment. Because I was in South Carolina, the gym was nine miles away from where I stayed. I was cycling every day to the gym. You rented in, like, a bike? A coal. No, no, no. I, I cycling bicycle. I bought it from Walmart, $100. Damn. Yeah, I bought the bike from Walmart and I was cycling every day and it was snowing. Damn. Yeah, I was cycling up, down, up. And, and, and the worst is, I still remember the area's name is Inman in South Carolina. Uh -huh. Okay. And it's one long stretch of a road mm. where like the whole road just goes and goes and goes long and the gym is like at the end, not even at the end, like the road still goes yeah, nine how, miles. Nine miles. How yeah. long would that take you? It'll take me 50 minutes on the bike. 50? Five zero, yeah. Five zero. And, and there's a steep hill that goes up like that. And that one was like a nightmare, bro. Is this, the snow. Was it snowing? Oh, you snowed. Yeah, it was snowing. Yeah, and I bro. was like, bum, 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 bum. I, I went there for four weeks and I came back and I was telling my ex, I was like, I really can't do camp here. It's like, it was very harsh and I just bitched out and I just came back. And then the coach. Aguilan can for, bitch out, guys. Yeah. yeah I didn't know the that. coach that I went there was, uh, his name is Brian Harper. I really like Brian Harper because he was very good at coaching this style of like doing wall wrestling. And, I, and that was like my main thing when I was studying. Doing MMA. You mean uh, like grinding against the wall? Yeah, yeah that okay, was my favorite you. thing to do. It was yeah, suitable for my game. And I went there to train with him and he, the gym wasn't even like, didn't have much fighters yet. I have mm. a couple of guys and they were all working, but they were coming only in the evenings to train. You know, we only had one day training. During the daytime, there's no training. You're by yourself. How do you find out about that gym, dude? Brian Harper. Brian Harper was the main guy I went to the US for. No, but how did you build the connection with him or, you know? Samir went there for training camp. Yes. In Team Quest in California oh, first. Okay. In 2013. Okay. Uh, by his friend called Tarek Safedin. He's a UFC I know, I know Tarek. Tarek yeah. So, Samir was friends with Tarek Safedin because they're both from Belgium. Okay. Mm. Oh, and then, Belgium? Yeah, Bel and then Bel Samir met Brian Harper and Daniel Warren and then... Uh, Samir spoke to Brian say, say Aguilan would like to come then he introduced me I started to speak to Brian then I went to meet Brian when I meet Brian Brian already left Team Quest he was working with Big John McCarthy the referee yeah, yeah. in a gym and then from there Sam said this gym have no fighters they are, they are up and coming gym they're going to shut down you just go to Team Quest and stay with Sam I went and stayed with Sam and then I came back Sam LV Sam LV then I came back after two days from Sam's, no, after uh, two weeks, I came back to, uh, who's that? Uh, Brian Harper. And then I realized it's like, oh, this is not the place for me. Yeah. Then I went back again to Sam's house, stayed in Sam's place for a week or two. I didn't like it. Why, I came why back you didn't care. train at Sam's gym like you were before? Um, you because I went there thinking that, oh, I want to work with Brian Harper specifically. Yeah, okay. I want to learn more. Mm. But and then I didn't understood why I'm there was no training going on. It was very hard to get it down because okay. he so wasn't getting things done. Yeah. So he left and then the gym shut down. Mm. Then I left from that place and I went to Sam Alvey's place and I stayed for like a week or two. Then I was like, oh man, this is not working out. I just left. I went back to KL. It was like, I spent roughly around three months there with $1,800 in my hand. Wait, wait, uh, USD? USD. But that, that is, 
It's kind of insane, man. That budget. Yeah, you cooked so, every day, I assume. No lah. I was like uh, doing like small jobs, like working behind the counters and stuff. Oh. Made like thirty dollars. So, so you, was, wait, you spend- illegally, yeah, a little bit, but spend <laughs> roughly around twenty dollars a day. Twenty dollars. Okay, per so day. when you say you spend eighteen hundred, you're including the money that you earn while you're there. Uh or- no, when I include the money that I earned there, it was like roughly around. Because three extra, months is a long time, bro. Extra three hundred. Uh, uh, Okay. I made dollars, mm. and then the run I had to pay for my flight extension, one thousand ringgit. So eighteen hundred in total was what I had, and that's including my Greyhound bus ticket, and then there was really nice people who helped me buy another bus ticket for free, and then there were really nice people who dropped me off in Tom Bradley International Airport, which is LAX. Yeah, yeah. And then yeah, man, there were some people who helped me, and then hey. when I stayed in Sam's house, Sam also give me free food sometimes. Hey, bro, I, yeah, I'm. Still very starstruck. Uh, yeah. You name dropping all these uh, UFC dudes that I watch all the time. So, yeah. Um, yeah so, Ben Askren. Yeah, six weeks, and six I just came back. You from came there. back, yeah, from yeah. South Carolina. So, how was your preparation to fight him, dude? I was doing a lot of sparring rounds. You, wrestling? No, like rounds. Like I was trying to work on my striking. Why? Do, why? Uh, why do? Because we thought, oh, Ben Askren is a wrestler. <laughs> we should have a good striking game. Typically thinking, lah. But were you confident in your breast, uh, grappling? In my striking, no. Back no, no, then. I mean in your grappling, in my grappling wrestling against him. Um, I think if I had a better guidance yeah. or better coaches that who taught at that time, because all the coaches I had in Malaysia, they were doing it at the same time as I was doing it. You Get mean it? they're learning as you were learning? Yes, yeah, so they, they you, never had experience coaching other fighters. You were the most experienced, that's yeah. what I'm trying to say, because yeah. you're bringing back knowledge from um, the, the people US, that you train yeah. with. and Yeah, got you. Yeah. So I, I was thinking like, okay, I got this Midi, my, my training partner, mm. until now, so we were very good friends. Yeah. I told him, like, okay, you give me good wrestling rounds and then I will do scrambling positions, like escaping all those positions. Yeah. And then after that, I'll stand up and I'll strike with this guy, Mustafa, my training partner. Yeah. I'll train with him. I'll train with Shem, Shamrock. And then... What? Shamrock? Yeah, Shamrock. Shamrock? Can- Shamrock used to be a fighter. In- Not Ken Shamrock, or the French no, no, Shamrock. No, 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 no. Shamrock. Uh, S-H-E-M. Okay, local dude, is it? No, no, he's a UK dude. He was living here. He started his pro career here. And then he moved back to UK. Now he trained with Paddy Pimblet. Oh, okay. So, yeah. so bro, you actually went in the Ben Askren fight. You thought that you could knock strike him out him. in the first no, round, is like, it? No, I thought huh? I could outstrike him you for could, you, five, 50, 25 minutes. You weren't worried about the, the wrestling? I was worried. Very worried. Very, yeah. very scared. Very scared to a point I didn't believe that I could have actually defended things. So you're saying that you kind of froze a little bit. Uh. Yeah, froze. And, and I have this issue all the time in my fights. And also, I went in the fight. Even though I was froze, I got back up once first. I saw, but you, you used the cage, right? Yeah, no, yeah no, I, I used the cage to get back up, yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I, I saw, but uh, pretty much it was um, a, a domination. Uh, yeah, um, two yeah. minutes and then that's it. And then Shinyaoki fought him after and lost in a minute. Yeah, yeah. Shinyaoki is like a world-class grappler. <laughs> yeah, he is. So, bro, what was your takeaway from that fight, man? How did you feel right after that? Your first title fight, your 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 only title fight, right, so far? Uh, yeah. After yeah. that, we only fought for like the Grand Prix to go back for the title contention, which I lost with Kardashian. Yeah. Oh, that was for the Grand Prix. That, yeah. that that's before to... Abasov is or after Abasov. Before Abasov. Okay, before. Yeah. yeah, bro, that was a mad fight, man. Yeah, that one but, was, the, and so, I had a back injury. So in that year. Um, okay, so after Ben Askren. Then I fought Amitesh. That's just a tin can guy. No, no, doesn't fight anymore. Mohammed. Oh first. yeah, Mohammed Sharif. Uh, oh. Mohammed Sharif is not bad actually. He's very strong. He got knocked out by Sexy Yama. Recently. Yeah, Sexy Yama. And then uh, Shobi. Uh, Shobi. Amitesh yeah, that Shobi. guy is like just like a wannabe guy lah. Yeah. So yeah. you you fought you you after Ben Askren you bounced back with two more, two more wins. Yep. In a span of ten One months. Year? Yeah, ten months. Yeah. And then you. Took an L against uh, Kardashian. Yeah, and who... after this fight camp, I lost this. This after this Amitesh Chaubi. Yeah. yeah. I took an injury, like a big injury, to my back. I hurt my back, like I me being stupid, trying to be tough, deadlifting. Oh, damn. Yeah, I deadlift something so heavy. So I went from this fight injured. Then I went to this fight injured. To Kardashian, you fought Kardashian injured, bro. Injured, injured back. You can see my body, so it wasn't like in the bro. best shape possible. Shit, man! Wait, I even put it in the notes. Uh, something I want to ask you. Yeah. The third round, you 
you showed yeah I popped my shoulder yeah okay yeah, yeah I noticed because yeah. you were wincing why I throw the overhand and then yeah. it dropped and I was like oh, okay I didn't even train properly for it and that shows that that if you don't condition yourself well to prepare yeah, for a fight course, you right. most likely take injuries like so, this so um, how was your how many weeks did you have for that one dude that one I had 7 weeks but ideally is what 12 for you no it's usually 7 to 8 weeks in one mm. usually they give that much for akiyama i got 12 that was mad as well bro yeah that one yeah. i came back straight away from a back surgery but bro let's the kadistan fight um the round? you hurt yeah you hurt your hand in the third round and that's yeah. when it went i think he hurt you to the body and then you couldn't you couldn't cover your head right after that because you were worrying about the body no is it i punch him i drop my shoulder mm. he need me in the face mm. Is and I go wobbled a bit and then I walk against the cage. He need me and he punch me and he punch me and punch me. Yeah. Me being the tough guy that I always want to be. The ref stop and I drop. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, <laughs> that's okay. how it always goes. Okay, so um, your second loss, bro. How how was the mental side like, after that? I don't know because. You, after, you fought not long after wait, how long after that I fought again at the end of the year yeah, five months later so yeah would you say you you rushed anything if now thinking it, it's just always like that it's always been like that all the guys around the gym will say like oh you shouldn't fight again this and that but I think I just fight what else am I gonna do <laughs> bro you know because when I see the amount of fights right I was actually surprised that you're twenty eight this year you know I'm you're actually fairly young uh for people that don't know. Fighters peak around thirty two, thirty three. Yeah, that's your prime. In one. in your weight class, ah, yeah. which is uh welterweight, right? Yep. Yeah. So if you've got a huge amount of experience, man. Yeah. So the next fight, um, by the way, Kadastam he lost to, um, he fought Abasov after that. Both these dudes are champions former cha- in the division. Yeah. Former champions. Yeah. Um. Wait. Who, who's the current? No, no, no. The current is Christian Lee. Yeah, Christian Lee. Christian Lee beat Abasov. Yeah, Ab- who beat him as well. Yeah. Um. I saw the uh, the Abasov loss. Um. That was, it was a tough loss to take. That one. Uh, so I like I froze and then um, uh, I froze because I didn't believe that with the back injury I could do better. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So you, both the losses you you were. No, no. This one I didn't freeze. This one, right? I didn't go to train as much. To cut the stem. Gym, cut the stem. Yeah. But in my mind, I was like, man, fuck this shit. I'm gonna go and fight. Uh, I just went and fight. This is something that I take away from Ben Askren fight. I was like, I'm not going to listen to anybody in my gym. I'm just going to go there and do my job. Why? Because when I went and fought in Ben Askren, right? People you were like, to everyone. I was listening to everyone. Like, this is something that I learned throughout the whole career. Like, you will tend to be influenced by everybody, but nobody. You will never tend to stop and see how much you have done, <laughs> and how much they have done. You, yeah. I don't know. I can see that. I can, yeah, I not can, everybody can see I can see, see that it. it's surprising that you couldn't um, see no, that it, it takes time you know yeah. uh, because you're too busy doing something I, I got you, yeah. got you. I, I mean I because what, what why I say that is because um I just I see the the effort la, and the dedication you have yeah. in the tra- traveling all over to get do the best you can for your career to improve and grow yeah so six months later did you I did a back surgery oh, after I was off yeah. okay so You did two weeks. Ba- two weeks after, I think I did the back surgery. Christmas Day, I did yeah, the back surgery. That was that was good. Right, you you tried yeah. to do it as soon as possible. After. Yeah. Okay. But how about your your mental side and all, bro? Like, did you your confidence after the two losses? After that, only I went and took the mental coach. The three classes. That so Kadastam. After you lost to Kadastam Abasov, <laughs> I did the mental coach. I I did also because like I don't want to feel like. Because of my back, I cannot lift people anymore. Yeah, lift and slam people. Yeah, and then but over time, I understood that like oh, with prop like that's when I start to introduce myself to more sports science things, like mm. things that really make sense and science based stuff that really can help you perform better. Then I started to read, do certifications and shit. Stuff that the, the UFC fighters are privileged enough to have at the yeah, performance at the PI, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we kind of like did it by ourselves here. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You when you say we, you mean you. Uh, Me and one of the coaches that I was working with that time. Yeah. 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 Is um really lucky lah to have uh people to help you out with all this yeah, stuff. Yeah. Well. So we you know, we actually like kind of bought and then we like split the effort. Like you read some, I read some. You read some, I read some. Okay. Hey. Um. I forgot to ask you this. Uh. Were you a good student? Went to school. Yeah. No. No. Bad. Uh. Very bad. My uh, education very bad. I fail. Three subjects in SPM. I got one mm. D in BM and I got one C in English. English also got C, ah. Uh. Mm. But your English is fine, bro. Because maybe I travel and I hang out with a lot of quailos. 
maybe I speak better English. That's what I want. So, um, I'm not sure about this. Are you full Indian? <coughs> uh, yeah. I, I was scared I that you're not full Indian, Indian because <laughs> my dad and my mom got married mm. when my mom was like really young, mm. and my dad always used to say like my mom is some kind of mixed woman. She's but she, is she? She is like I think she's Malayali. Yeah. Or, oh, yeah. Mali is African country, right? No, 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 no. It's Indian. It's just another. I don't know, bro. I'm sorry. Another man. cast, yeah, exactly. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> hey, India's huge. Okay, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, so, um, so pretty much you would say in high school, English is not your first language. No, English was our first language. Uh-huh. It's just like maybe writing and grammar all this. Yeah, this this is different now. If if uh, you're not a good student, you won't be writing good essays. So. Yeah, most likely. So you. Always better though, at studying. Better, better. Yeah. Well, you found something that doesn't revolve yeah. around studying, or thankfully. No, I still had to study later on to understand the sports science and all these things, and it was like hard. <laughs> well, it's because it's something you are interested in rather than learning about I don't know, uh, what physics or chemistry or something. Maybe yeah, I was an art student, lah. Oh, yeah. you art student. Oh shit! Sorry. Uh-huh. Uh, well, uh, did you learn accounting? No. No. Nothing. Yeah. Well, basic not. maths, I fail. But I can count money. That's okay. Yeah. If you can count to a uh, a thousand, a million, that's about it. Yeah. That's all you need. Uh. <laughs> you just need to know how to segregate your money. That's all. That's the maths you need in life. <laughs> so um, you had the mental coaches. Uh, one only lah, one lady. Yeah. And she was a jujitsu competitor herself. Oh okay. And then she said like how to overcome this, and then it's like she, she, most of the things that I used to talk about her was based on things like how I used to feel bad about doing something. Get it, but and then that no, no, kind of like made me feel bad about myself. Like, like, like what? Like for example, like, like I'm having a talk with you, and I'm yeah, like, yeah. "Hey man, don't be a piece of shit." And then I say something like impulsive like that, yeah. and then I'll go back home and I'll rethink that. So shit, yeah, man. I heard, I heard Brian's feelings, man. Yeah. Like, then why did I? I'm a piece of shit, man. Like I burn myself down. Uh-huh. But then she said, "No, if he was a piece of shit, he was a piece of shit. So you didn't do the wrong thing. So she will just reevaluate the situation, and explain to me how to understand yourself better. You know those okay. kind of things. And then she like help me with the fight, how to think. It's like, oh, you need more, but you actually already did. And then you already want to do more, but it's not necessary. And then those kind of things. She tell you how to think in a different way. Okay, which I find out didn't work out very well." Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I feel like it was the same shit. You should just yeah yeah. You're wrong. You're wrong. You're right. You're right. <laughs> All right. Uh, works for some. Works. Uh, doesn't work for some. Yeah. So Akiyama, bro. Yeah, I went in. Wait. Um. I'll. Uh, you had a full training camp. Two weeks. Out. No, I came back from the surgery. Yeah. I was already starting my prehab stuff. Like I was doing my yeah. prehab stuff. So so for one month I'm bedridden. You know, when mm. you do a back surgery, one month bedridden. Yeah. Get out from the bed. End of January. Start training. Broke up with my ex girlfriend about that time too. Like we say, like okay, we're done. We're no longer going to be together. And then yeah. from there, move on straight away. She wasn't away. about the fight life, or? Um, <laughs> no, she was like because she was she was Chinese, and then she was like, oh, I have no savings in my bank account. And I was like, hey, that's uh, Chinese women for you. Yeah, but she was an older woman than me too. She was like mm. she was in her forties, and I was like in my twenties. Oh sure, shit. Yeah. So and then I was like, okay, some... uh, if you are all about that, then I think we should move on because yeah. my life is going to turn out to be much more harder if you think. If I fail another fight, yeah. you might not have any money. Yeah, you don't know, man. Yeah, yeah. so I was like, okay, we piece part ways, and then from there start training, 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 training. Mm. Manage to get some sponsors. Go to Bali, finish up the camp. And you then did your camp in, in Bali for Sexy Yama? Yeah, Sexy Yama. Yeah. The, the the remaining half of it. Bro, I want to ask about the so the surgery, right? You had back surgery. Yeah. How long did it take for you to just be able to start training properly? On March, I came back to the mats. To shadow yeah, box three months, okay. Yeah. So you you were not only your your entire training camp was basically you picking it up as well. Yeah. So okay. you're getting in shape, mm-hmm. and then re- regaining back your basic strengths. Yeah. You know, like doing all your strength and conditioning, strength training. A, a big worry about just like anyone who's recovering from a surgery is rushing things and yeah. getting re injured again, and then yeah. you're fucked, right? Um. And then you would probably pray for a clean f- victory and an easy fight, but that was far from it, bro. Yeah, yeah, it was. Uh, um, the whole camp in my mind, I was saying. So I I ditched the mind coach too because she was like, oh, maybe you should try and work on this kind of method to work. I'm like, okay, 
It's not. And then I went back. I talked to one of my guys in the states. He mm. used to, his name is Isaiah. He used to be a striking coach, and mm. he said, "He said, Aguilar, remember this. You know how to fight. It's not like you don't know how to fight." Yeah. And I was like, "What don't do you mean?" Don't let this bitch tell like, you what to do. No, it's like. <laughs> You say you know you know you know how to fight. It's in you. You have the skills. You've been training for years. You're telling me you forget overnight. What did you eat for dinner? It's like oh, I had this, and I say, what did you eat dinner ten years ago? It's like you can't say, of course, because it's food, right? And I was like, talk some crap, like yeah. guy. <laughs> Basically, I'm like, I don't get it. He's trying to be some kind of poetic guy, but the, at the end of the day, he's like, oh yeah, you like, worked. You know how to fight. It's like yeah. so, we were like, I know how to fight. I just need to get in shape. Yeah. So I focused on getting in shape, mm. and then. While Dude. I was getting in shape, slowly, slowly things came together, man. At the end of the day, by the time I'm finishing my camp, wow, well, I was throwing down with everybody, bro. Like I was like kicking, punching, like moving way more better than I ever did before. Uh, uh, bro, just to, to clarify, so for most of these fights, right, all the welterweight fights, you you cut ten about nine ten kilos, ah, uh, each fight. Yeah. Wait, 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 bro. Ah, shit. There was one fight I cut a lot more than. Wait, wait, bro. Until um, you went. Shit, man, I. I want to clarify also because people have this, but is this before the hydration test and all? Like yeah, be, before. What do you mean? All this hydration test has all included. Then how after do my be- second fight, I already got hydration test after. Um, what is that? Mm-hmm. The guy, the first fighter. Uh, what the hell is first fight? No, no, I, I, I need. Oh, I need after Jeff Wong. Jeff, yeah. Okay, so uh, after James Quam already got hydration test. Bro, so before we get into sexy sexy Yama fight, right? Bro, why? Like, why do people have this idea, right, that UFC fighters are, they, 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 they the way that they're doing it is so wrong and then the one FC fighters are doing it the right way where they have hydration tests and then the fighters are not able to cut as much weight, uh, weight and in that way, it's safer la, for the athletes. And then some people are telling me that, you know, they still cut a lot of weight. Yeah, yeah, we like still that. do. We still so, like, uh, honestly, are, yes, are you allowed do. to talk about this? Um... I can say this. Let's just say this. To yeah. be successful with your weight and hydration in one is way more harder than any other promotions. But fighters can still do it. Okay? I see. Yeah. Okay. It's way more harder to stay hydrated and be on weight. But fighters still tend to do it. So what you're, you're saying is those fighters in the UFC, the, the main way they cut the weight is water weight. Yeah. Whereas in... 1FC It's not all water weight It's not all water weight You still get it done And you pass the hydration test So you have to have Somewhat of a diet To bring your walking weight Lower than usual You cannot be dehydrating yourself From 20 pounds And still stay hydrated Like so you mainly Maybe you will be Still cutting like 2 or 3 kilos on fight week And you'll still be able to pass It's not a drastic change Like in the UFC You see guys come in 20 pounds Sometimes some even come Like 40 pounds they still okay. do it. So it's, it's basically more complicated for you guys. Uh, yeah, there. more complicated. I think that's why it is safer in a way, but it is harsher on the body if you're like... Is it safer extreme. then? It is... You Depends on how you do it. Okay. Depends on how you do it and how the athletes do it. Yeah. Um, that's why they say some it's not safe, some it's not safe. Um, a lot of people wouldn't, wouldn't know about this, man, unless they're in the 1FC. Yeah, yeah. yeah serious. Yeah. Only the fighters knows about this And shit, I've been man. making weight that way since, what, 2015? Even Ben Askren, I've been doing it. Yeah, a few years. Before, yeah, few, Askren, yeah, yeah. already start doing it. 2015, yeah. Okay, so, yeah. Going into Sexy Yama fight. Yeah, the dude is definitely past his prime, yeah. but he's still Sexy Yama. And he's he came a, off a win from the UFC too at the time. Was it? Yeah, his last fight was a win in the UFC. Oh, I can't. I can't remember. <clears throat> but uh, this dude, he's um been a lifelong athlete, a judo. Uh, what? He's an Olympic, judo almost an Olympic no, no, judoka, Asian but team. he was a no. He was a world champion. No, really? Yeah, Akiyama is a world champion in judo. Okay. Yeah. I um he swept you clean, uh. He uh, he Once, threw you. He threw That's you the clean, only uh. highlight he has, sir. Uh. Yeah. He then I threw clean. him like six times in the second round. Yeah, Nobody sees that. Bro, but what happened in the second round, bro? You you looked like you were done at one point. You know, he, you, you you were you were. He hit me in my nose, and then my nose got blocked because okay. of the blood, right? And then I got I was hard to breathe. Then I came back in the third round with my second win. Huh? Yeah, second win means like my second guest thing, huh? Yeah, which is um is basically for to, uh, a way to explain it is it's like. It's magic, huh? is it? No lah, you have it lah. It's just when you something happens, then you tend to panic sometimes. 
then you tend to ventilate. It's not normal, bro. Right? It's normal. It's common. You need to be in those kind of situations a lot more than you'll understand it. <laughs> People tend to get, you know, uh, third, fourth round, fifth round, they get, their gas tank gets uh, what lower and lower, you know, they get more fatigued. No lah. It's a, I think it's the mind game uh, sometimes. You tend really to think lesser up. about yourself than more than what you, you it have. It really was, uh, bro. You, you uh, really weathered the storm. Yeah. Uh, after that, fought Okami. Yushin Okami, Okami in yeah. a very close split decision. Yeah. Yeah. So you took a loss against uh, another, another... This guy is a way more tough wet lah. He has more fights. He has like 60 fights He's already. also younger than um, uh, Akiyama. Akiyama. Yeah. Had, 50 fights uh, yeah but, but but also like uh, he you can say he he's no more the same guy he was uh, Definitely but he, yeah, he came in with a game plan because he was coming off two to three losses already in one and everybody knocked him out and he was not happy with that yeah yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so I left it in the hands of the judges and but you must back. have felt f- fucking awesome your confidence right after the sexy Yama fight this is how long after no again as usual I tend to listen to people a lot yeah, more after. yeah yeah, four months after you... Fought Akiyama. Uh, Okami. Yeah, o- o- Okami. Yeah. How, yeah. How did you feel going in, bro? So, yeah, again, as usual, listening to too many people and had a different game plan. My game plan was to knee him in the face hard when he shoots for a takedown. Yeah, it sounds like a very simple game plan. Yeah, and <laughs> and it is, it is actually a big mistake having a very simple game plan because yeah. when you have a simple game plan, you tend to think like one person rather than thinking as, an, as yourself. You know, you'll tend to think like, oh, this coach is saying you can throw a knee. You'll tend to think like that coach is like, oh, yeah, he's my coach. If he say I can throw, I can throw. But then another coach will say something else. Have you ever had a fight where you, you told yourself, fuck the game plan and I'm fighting? Uh, I recently only started doing that. because Your last two no fights, more, is it? Yeah, I have no more influence of my coaches anymore. Not all of them. Like, I do the camp by myself now. Mm, Everything is... Yeah, I, I, I guide it by myself now. Dude... Did you did you feel um, very disappointed with your loss after Okami or uh, a little bit? I was a bit. Upset. But it was close, bro. It was very close. It was very close. Some people up. even thought like, oh, the, the people in the stadium came shook my hand. Mm. I, I don't know if you know who Rio Conan is. Rio no, Conan is that? like a very famous coach. Mm. He came and he shook my hand and he says like, I think you win. I was like, okay. I was like, okay. Uh, no, I uh, I think no uh, no arguments, not a robbery or anything. Yeah, it's yeah. not a robbery, but um, it's like very... Ra- he had more ground control time. Yeah, yeah. I had more activity time. That's it. Dude, the next guy you fought, Dante Shiro. Bro, people don't know who he is, right? But yeah, that he, dude is fucking good, bro. Yeah, he's he's not a good fighter, he's a great fighter, bro. Yeah. Um, he, I think a few fights ago, had a split decision loss to Logan Sturley. Yeah, and I, I, I got trained with Logan Sturley before in, in, in uh, Sanford. Yes, oh, I he's from Sanford. Yeah, he's Jason Sanford. Jackson. Yeah, okay. I trained with Rogan Strolly. He's a very good wrestler. Very, very good. Very good wrestler. Level. It's, it's very hard when he's on top for you to get back up. You know? And when I trained with him, I learned a lot. But I didn't know... I, I fought Dante and then I went to train with Logan and then Logan fought Dante. He fought uh, uh, Logan after you? Or? Yeah. Yeah, after me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he had like two losses. So he... He fought me, and then he fought Juho Valama, if I'm not mistaken, mm-hmm. and then he won two, and then he went to Bellator. Then mm-hmm. he fought done. Uh, he fought. Yeah, for his first so, fight slowly. in Bellator. And and his first fight in Bellator was straight up for title contention because yeah. after that, Storley fought uh, uh, Lima for the belt. Uh, he won. He won the belt. Yeah. Yeah. He's a good fighter, man. I, bro, his yeah. pace was fucking insane, bro. Yeah, you guys have insane pace. Man. He opened up my face. This guy is good, Dante. And then after that, I fought Tyler. Tyler, oh, Tyler dude, that was guy's good as well. Yeah, he was a he fought who he for the title? He was a former title, title contender. Um, he beat Sapo, Sato, Santos, and then he beat Card- He fought Cardas then, but Cardas then beat him. The, yeah, yeah, that was the title fight or fight. Yeah. So he had a five round fight. Cardas time. Not five round lah. Four rounds and Cardas then dropped him at the end. Yeah, I mean he he trained for a five round yeah, fight yeah, yeah. Huh? yeah, and then um he fought you right after that. No, he before. came back after two years to fight. How, how, how was that fight for you? Bro? Well, this fight was a disaster. Pandemic, gym closures, no training partners. I just left Monarchy. I can't travel out of the country. He, uh, went to the stadium. Never experienced to fight like this before. Yeah. The stadium was empty. We went to the stadium. They didn't even have time for us to warm up. They said, oh, you're ready to go now. I run why, left why and no right. Why no warm up time? Cause just because of this. No, we reached the stadium late. 
they <laughs> didn't know the timing because they themselves now only starting yeah. to do shows like everything this. is havoc uh, yeah havoc like, and this is like their second show if i'm not mistaken after when the pandemic started and bro we went there we were one week in locked up in the room food was sent to our room we were cutting weight in, in the room hitting yeah. pads in the room Harry. no just shadow boxing running skipping rope oh and then they give you access to treadmill one hour a day and my cornerman mo was my wife <laughs> i couldn't bring any of my coaches because coaches were still attached to monarchy mm. and uh yeah man i went there and i was like okay i'm just going to wing it i'm just going to fight okay so that's and, a fight where you 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 didn't exactly yeah, I didn't to... exactly do much and i was i don't think i was in the best shape ever neither because the pandemic hit i came back from the us i was like 95 and then throughout the pandemic i gained weight to 103 And from 103, I cut down to 83.9 again. Well, how long did that take you? It took me around from from June all the way to to June, July, Dude. August, o- September, October. I found him. Yeah. Vishnu, he's What? very interested in. He I'll would he would like some tips uh, on how to lose. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, for sure. I can give you some tips. The whole thing. Yeah, from 103 yeah. went to 83.9 and then fought. Well, after that, I was just like, I think that's when I oh, realized no. I'm depressed. Oh, man. Your schedule is hectic, lah, bro. Then, after that, I fought this crazy son of a gun Ten called Tetsuka. Tetsuka. And okay. this guy, guy is a is world mad. champion. He's mad. He looks like, yeah. a, what's that, that uh, one punch man? Yeah. He's mad, bro. He's shorter than you. Shorter than me. Which and is... Yeah. And and going into this camp, I knew it was like okay, something is going to come up. His legs, bro. You yeah. have big legs. He has big He legs. Bigger legs too. And bro, I I didn't expect him to be as strong as he was. Like a uh, grappling wise or his no, like punches. it was hard to like do things on him because he was just like strong. He would push you. He had like the man strength. Yeah. But he was a uh, what farmer a uh, farmer background. I don't think so. It's only farms. So I think some roids too. <laughs> you think so? <laughs> Uh, but it's okay lah this, mm. so this guy I started the camp heavy too this Tetsuka and Tyler I was getting really heavy because mm. I was working already and I was like trying to was it, make an income and trying to fight w- did you get last minute notice to for these fights because it no, was no 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 okay. they give us adequate notice mm. but I think I was just not enough ready for an adequate notice because of the pandemic and gaining mm. so much weight right yeah. it's basically my fault lah I yeah. didn't <laughs> manage to stay disciplined with my weight sure sure And uh, um, when you cut that much of weight, there was no way you're gonna maintain strength or. Of course, bro. Like endurance, yeah, you, right? Yeah, you can see that for all your fights, right? Yeah, pretty much. But then again, you know, your opponents feel the same way. Yeah, but that's but my opponents are like some of them are like very. They come from a country where it was opened earlier. Yeah, they get know? better access to yeah, facilities. Yeah, so they had the bed. And I remember when I was fighting Tetsuka, two weeks before the camp started, they do a lockdown again. And then I was like, okay, fuck this shit. I'm just going to go to the gym. I'm going to get the guys that I need to train with. Just do a couple of rounds every now and then. And then I'm going to run as much as I can. Lift weights is yeah. at the best place that I can get. What, what are to. you without your your training partners, right, bro? Like how important it is lah, as fighters. You need, it, yeah. As much as it's, a, it's an individual sport, yeah. it's a team that brings you there. Yeah, you're nothing without yeah, them. Yeah, nothing without you, them. You, yeah. yeah, and you're lucky lah, to be yeah. able to have them to prepare and all. Yeah. Yeah, but, um, true, but bro, I towards the end of the third round also. Um, oh, I almost him. dropped him. I you almost, did drop. I I won the first first round. Mm. I I almost like fifty fifty on the second round. Yeah. And the third round guaranteed. If I moved a little bit more and I played a little bit safe, I won the fight. So this was the one I I, I mixed up just now with um with Kadesam. This was the one you ate a was it because you ate a body shot? So you yeah. Kept, this you is kept, the one I ate a body shot. Yeah. And and I also had. Add like a bro, you, big. If you watch, no, no, my head. You should watch his fucking. Insane I think I watched. I took a big ass right hand, and I was like, "You took like, many big ass right hands, bro." And, then and I was left. like against the wall, and I start seeing everything too. And I was like, "Okay, what do I do?" And I was just gonna curl up against the wall. Then my coach was like, "Okay, oh, Lon, keep your hands up." No, yeah, you know, there was a moment you froze already. Bro. Yeah, I, I was like, "Boom, was bad, boom, man. boom, boom," and then the referee. Yeah. Stopped it while I was still standing, standing TKO. But uh, just bro, just for the record, right? You've got a fucking insane chin, right, dude. I, I'm Can't sure you, I'm sure that. you know that, right, dude. I know, but Go don't want to take advantage of it neither. Yeah. Uh, no, um, it's not something like a lot of fighters say, like, It's not something they're proud of, right? Yeah. Yeah, but no, dude, you're blessed with that um attribute, lah, uh, dude. I think the Indian in me came out. <laughs>
Indian is the the Mexican uh, of uh, Asia, I guess. Not all lah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, bro, why I I I watched so I just just watching all your fights, right? And I mean, there's tons of kickboxing Muay Thai fights that one championship put on, right? The striking level is higher than UFC. Do you think so? Uh, I'm not sure. It's right? for me. It's it's so much more. How do I put it? It's it's more intense. I I think so far all the in fights one. that I've watched. Yeah, the yeah, the striking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, in one, they focus more on you getting a knockout, a finish. They it's more violent, to, bro. Yeah, they're trying to be more violent here. Your fights are violent, bro. Like as, some of it, lah, not all of it. The the ones where you're where, where you're striking, they yeah. they are fucking violent, bro. Compared to. I don't know, man. In UFC, when I see the fights, some of them, they, they, they get pretty nasty as well. They try but to play it safe too, right? They want to win by the scorecards. Oh, very tactical. Yeah. Yeah, very Especially much. in the UFC, man. If you're, if you're the top five, top ten, there's a lot of money you're talking. You want that money one for sure. You know what's fucking crazy? Remember when Kevin Holland fought um, Wonder Boy? Yeah. So, they made an agreement, you know, not to take it to the ground and Kevin Holland had the edge on the ground but he decided to stand and strike with Wonder Boy. And he, he got fucked up, bro. Um, he did rock Wonder Boy badly in the first round, bro. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, Jin Tae Ho. Oh, mm. this one. I, wait, wait, bro. I sorry. Just... Um, so after the the Tatsuka fight, fight, bro. How how was the recovery and all, bro? So I think the two most disastrous fights I have was Kardashian and Jin Tae Ho. Kardashian. Jin Tae Ho. Hey, sorry. Uh, Tatsuka. Tetsuka. I'm not surprised, bro. Because I remember with Tetsuka, I I had like a nosebleed. Hey, no, no, no. With Tetsuka, I had like one eye shut, mm. nosebleed, and then uh, my jaw was like locked. I couldn't eat. Bro, I'm surprised you didn't break any bones, man. Dude. Yeah, but with uh, with Kardashian, it was like this weird ass kind of swell I had. I don't know why. I think he he hit really hard, man. Kardashian hit hard. I know Kardashian hit hard, he really hits, hard. Yeah, he does hit. Yeah, he, hard, he drops people. He looks one scary. Shot. Yeah, he looks like. It sounds rude, but it looks like an. Uh, what he do you call it? He looks like a hitman. Like he looks like an ogre, bro. Like not an yeah. ogre. I don't know. Just like yeah, okay, whatever. Yeah. So I remember scary, after bro. the fight, I went back to the room. And me being typical, I'm like, oh, let's oh, go to the hospital. Go to the hospital, and I was like, okay. Uh, the doctor say, oh, you're fine. They scan, say there's no brain damage, and then you can go. So I buy a nasi kanda and I go back to the room. It's Malaysian Palita. doctor? Yeah, Malaysian doctor in Sunway. Oh, okay. And then, Shit. he never say anything. The doctor didn't say anything. So then one was like, if anything, just call us, and then we'll pay for all the medical Yeah, oh, do- One said, but we didn't call. We didn't but, care. But do, do one, does one do that? Right? Yeah, one does it. They, they looked oh. after me very well. One is like, I always has looked after me. Okay, they look after the the, the fighters. Yeah, I always. guess the the big fighters are not all. <laughs> no, they did very good after me. Uh, yeah, bro. So um, I buy nasi kanda, I eat, and it's nose bleeding all over. Okay, <laughs> yeah. bro. Uh, then Jin Tae Ho, that was a fluke, lah. Yeah, yeah. Um, you were uh, it, it took it. I think it was only three minutes, right? Yeah, Five. I took him down, and then you're controlling also. The I was controlling, time, bro. He stood up. And bro, I didn't expect was he him known to for go his that rapping? fast. No, he's not right. No. That's that's the the really yeah, surprising yeah. part, man. Bro. Yeah, I thought he would like strike because I knew he was like those kind of awkward strikers. Oh. So when I took him down, I thought like, yeah, I'll be good to go. Yeah, but it's no. time to ride him uh, on the wall. Yeah, but yeah. then he he timed it well. Yeah, I saw it, bro. Yeah. And, but he was he had a good celebration. You know, he had a good yeah. time. Uh. Yeah, yeah. Be happy uh, for him, uh. <laughs> Yeah, but how was your? Uh, how did you feel uh, after that, bro? Upset, uh, as usual, uh. You upset for a couple of days, but but you see how many losses I took already by the time I fought him. Like, yeah, every loss I just you, learn yeah, something you learn. new. And then you'll be like, oh, maybe I should have done that. Oh, I should have done this. And I'm like, ah, oh, man, fuck this shit. Just the go truth, back to doing the same thing. The truth is, you zigged when you should have zagged, and uh, yeah, it's like kind of like um. Just getting knocked out, you know. Sometimes one yeah. punch. That, that's what it looked like to me, like, when he yeah. put the kimura on. Yeah. yeah. Okay, bro. Now you're riding a two-fight win streak. Yep. <clears throat> Stojanov and Kasayev. Yeah. They're fairly new young fighters, but both undefeated. Who's next, we bro? We have no idea. If you had a choice, uh, who would you want to? I I personally want to fight for the title, right? And yes. whatever that thi- I think that can bring me back closer to the title is obviously the top three or four guys, lah. Which two guys who I've already fought. And two guys who I haven't who? fought. 
One is Kardashian, another the, one is Tetsuka. These two guys have the three fight win streak at the moment. The nest, those nasty yeah. dudes. Yeah, and are. then uh, the other two is either the other two guys have a loss, but they are the bigger names: Cameron Abasov yeah. and uh, Soldik. Yep, yep. And then there's another two more guys. One is this undefeated Russian guy, ten and zero. What's his he name? He beat Kardashian. His name is Murat Ramazanov. Oh yeah. Okay. He has the most amount of wins in welter. Not most lah. Like he has he the current biggest wins. The last beat. his last win was Kardashian. Okay. So he he's the deserving one to fight for the title in my opinion. Okay. But then there's this another guy called Easy Fitikefu, who is currently a new scene who beat this guy called Valmir, who mm. Valmir beat Jin Tae Ho. So kind of like in this ranking, the six mm. guys. I want to fight other one of these guys. So what's going on with Christian Lee? If you have any idea. I can't, don't know, bro. It looks like their family is going through something hard. Uh, of course. Yeah. yeah, and I hope they do well, like, they mm. get over it soon or something. Lah. Yeah, but, uh, Nothing bad for them, lah, hopefully. Yeah, uh, but it's like, it's kind of like the, the UFC, right? When, if the title is on hold for such a long time, right? Yeah. Um, I don't know. Do, do you think it's possible that they might vacate the title? Or? I have no idea, but they, they say it's coming back on February next year. Like the welterweight scene, uh, is yeah, getting back yeah, to yeah, action. Yeah, yeah. Um, hopefully, uh, bro. Hopefully. And I hopefully uh, think that one can bring the MMA back to the forefront uh, because currently they are like focusing more on Muay Thai. A whole lot, bro. Um, yeah. But you can understand why, is it? Yeah, I can understand why. I know what what are their goals, right? I kind of can see it from what they're doing. Wait, why? Why do they do I that? think because they're in Thailand. They're in Lumpini. You know? mm. They're trying to give more exposure to Muay Thai. Uh, as a, as the sport itself, you know, and also trying to bring out more of the Thai talents out to the world. They they also have a lot of access to. There's plenty of Muay Thai fighters everywhere, yeah, and they fight all the time, and they're good. Yeah, yeah. And that's one another reason as well too. Okay, bro. If if you could have one rematch, right? That if you could just pick one, which uh, rematch would you pick? Which one do you want back the most, and why? I would want Jin Tae Ho back. That's for sure. No, oh, that yeah. one I'm surprised, yeah, man. Because I feel like I could have done better. Definitely. Yeah, but and then also, the most dangerous ones is Kardashian and uh, and Tetsuka. One I want man, those though. two back. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I feel like those are like a little bit personal. You know, like I think that's the Indian. You put on a, a a real good fight <laughs> up till the end, bro. Yeah, it's, it's one of yeah. dangerous fights. As much as I want to call it a revenge, I I also. I'm scared about it, you know, because these guys are not sh- easy. Shitting your pants, dude. Yeah, so these yeah. guys are dangerous. <laughs> yeah. Um, or did you always want to be a, a father? No, or? but I always wanted to have a family. Like, I wanted to have You knew my, that? From yeah, I needed somebody to, like, look after my shit if I want to continue my career. I knew that very well. And You, you mean you need a... A partner. A partner. A ride or die, right? And that's when I met my my girlfriend, who is currently my wife, Anjali. Uh, I met her in the gym in 2019 on oh, the she, same. Yeah. I saw she um recently did what a jujitsu match. No, that one was like 2019. 2019. Well. Yeah. Oh, okay, she sorry. ever since then she didn't train much. Now mm. she's like, she kind of like sacrificed her time for us lah, for me mm. and for my son and her job as well. So she she and I met and then we've been together throughout the whole pandemic. She was with me. I helped her out as much as How I long can. Were you guys together until you got the first baby? We were together for three years. Mm. 2022, we got married. Yep. And then before we got we got married, I think she was already pregnant, but she only mm. realized she was pregnant after we got married. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So then she was yeah. like, oh. Perfect. I was like, oh, just, just go with the flow. Just Let's just have the baby. Then I just work harder and try to supply the so, money. So, yeah. <laughs> so, so, bro, now, now that you, you have a child, bro, how's that feeling? Like? You know, it's a very cliche thing people always say that it it just it increases it increases your drive it change uh, increases your capacity to love I don't know uh, I feel yeah. like I'm the same stress guy stress up bro more no, stressed I'm, yeah I'm more stressed out and I'm like pissed off most of the time but shit this guy's too honest yeah and then I'm like uh, I don't know man I, 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 I make sure I don't me and my wife always argue regardless of what it is we argue we like quarrel like crazy but and then we are true to each other, you know. Like I can say shit to her, and then she can say shit back to me, and we can talk. Sometimes she don't get the chance. She always says that to me, and then she cries, and then I hug. Sorry, done. Uh. Then my son, we we don't do anything with him. He's still young. He don't oh, know anything. Too young. 
Yeah. yeah, it's like he eats, sleeps, shit. He cries, and then we'll ask him what he wants, even though we know you're not going to get an answer. We say like, yeah, okay, whatever, it's good. That's so. That's what you, that's what you're doing outside of uh, uh tra- yeah, training uh, yeah. with the family. Yeah, I don't out. try to put this kind of thing. Oh, I need to work harder for my son. No, I just try to do my best, and if it supplies everyone, then I'm good. I think it's different because maybe for other people, maybe they weren't exactly already on the right path. You know, and they had a focus or they had a mission. You already had that before you yeah. had your baby, and yeah. it was already clear. You know, you wanted to be yeah. the best at what you do. And now also, even with coaching too, I feel like I, I will stick around this game for longer than I think it is. That's uh, dude for for a lot of fighters, uh, successful or not not successful. Also, a lot of them um, end up uh, coaching. It's also something that you. Basically, you are able to stay in the the spot that you love, lah. Yeah. Even after. I feel like I life. like to stay rather than like be somewhere else, you know. Yeah. One thing I want to ask: uh, What's the difference grappling in the ring, right, and the and the cage? Just grappling. Yeah, yeah. the walls part. You know, uh, sex- I, I don't know because the one's cage, right, is a very good cage. You know, like uh, and then the one's ring. It's a very good ring too. It? Yeah, it's a very good ring. You don't see people in the one ring coming and holding the ring for you. It's sturdy. It doesn't move much. It's firm. Like if you go run into it, you probably hurt yourself. But it's very different also, right? Because there's a big hole, you know. There's yeah, it's better. You can put your hand around. You think you so? Can grab the guy and pull oh, him back in. Yeah. Okay, okay, that's why I was curious to yeah. to know because it's very very different. Yeah. You you, you you see, I I tried to leg hook my opponent. My leg went over the hook and I pull him out and pull it back in. Oh, which do you remember which fight was that? The one, the reason one. Oh, okay, okay. So the reason why I think you can't find a video directly, I so you gotta. It. Oh, you the, found it. The big, the full thing, one. Ah, yeah, it's yeah. the first two fights, and then you I can watch. I just can't right? remember, bro, because I watched all fights yesterday, man. This yeah. guy. <laughs> okay, bro. Outside of uh, outside of fight, fighting, lah. You got any hobbies, interests, no. stuff that? I just stay at home. My ideal day is stay at home, ride the bike for twenty minutes, sit in the sauna for twenty minutes. Mm. What do you watch? Nothing. Fights. No, that's the last no. thing you want to watch. Isn't no, it? nothing. I sit down and watch vlogs of people, like, no. uh, like not vlogs. It's like so. For example, like there's these guys who do vlogs in like Bali, just riding a motorbike. Like, oh, this place has this. This is thirteen minutes. Yeah. I just let it play. Then I watch a lot of like spiritual stuff. People talking about like, yeah. oh, Leo is gonna have a good month. Then Leo. Are oh, you into astrology? Yeah, astrology. Horoscope. What are you, bro? I'm a Leo. Oh. I'm a pig. Big zodiac, uh-huh. uh yeah. yeah. My son is a Sagittarius. Okay. My wife is a Capricorn. Uh bro. If your um, your son is pretty much gonna grow up around seeing this, us do this, yeah. Yeah, seeing y'all do this around this environment. Would you want him to be a fighter? That's up to him, lah. But if he wants to be a fighter, whoa, it's gonna be hard. <laughs> I will like you go, you give it I'll to be him like, good. One hundred percent. Like I won't even be a father anymore. But like I'm gonna put the gloves and punch him hard every time if I can. Yeah, well, but- I'm gonna just be honest. Like he's child abuse on another level. Oh. Why, 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 why? Like I want my son to be champion, no? Yeah. yeah. Um, it's kind of child abuse in a very effective, long term way. I yeah. Don't know. <laughs> Sean Strickland way maybe. Yeah. <laughs> uh, bro, you got any favorite fighters at the moment? At the moment, yes. Yeah, I like how you ask this, right? Mm. I don't moment. have like a, at the moment. I it think always I changes, like, bro. Yeah, always changes. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, I like watching um, uh, uh, this guy called uh, jo- Joshua Conan Silviero. From he, where? He fights in PFL. Oh. He has a very simple style. He's he's a light heavyweight. He lost recently, but he has a very simple style. So I like to watch him. He's oh, a southpaw. Yeah, it's very simple. Like he box and he box. He doesn't punch his heart. He puts the volume on you. Then every now and then he throws a kick out of the mm. blue just to keep you away from him. It's kind of like Nick Diaz. Uh, no, no, no. He's like very, very like 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 a little bit of a slow down version of Clay Guida. Mm. Then he box, box, box. He'll just throw a left hook or when people punch, he'll dip his head down and he'll get a underhook in. Mm. Controls the wrist and then starts kneeing you. Disengages, throws a left hook and a right hand. Oh, I mean, it's because southpaw, right? Left hook, yeah. lead, uh, left hand and then... Yeah, very simple style. Bro, you you started off as a, a grappler, right, bro? But yeah. it really didn't take long for you to... 
improve your striking a, no, a, no, no, a whole no. I had, lot. I have some struggles. Like I still had like that, the phobia of getting punched. Bro, and, you like, fucking fought Kard- Kardashian, dude. Yeah, and, that and, one. And was that like, was yeah. mad, bro. I know. You know? But in the, in the in the training room, I struggled a lot. Yeah, but I'm I'm saying in the cage, uh, you yeah. you imp- it seemed that you improved your striking. You became well rounded very fast, man. Of course, I put a lot of effort into training with a lot of guys too, right? Mm-hmm. Like I went to the states and stuff. Do you use Do you use both stances, uh, bro? Yeah, sometimes. I I saw in the sexy Yama fight, you the third round you was in your south pose. Yeah, yeah, but why? Well, uh? It's also because he calf kicked the living lights out of me, <laughs> <laughs> so it's <Yeah>. painful. <laughs> That's usually how it is. Uh. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sometimes out of the blue, we have to do it. Uh. Who else do you like uh, to watch fight, bro? I've been watching that guy, and then. <coughs> um, I watch a lot of instructionals, sir. I don't watch fights. Like, you know Gordon Ryan? Yeah, yeah. I watch his instructionals, and then I watch some of, like, the... Like, judo instructionals, Craig Jones instructionals. Mm. Fighter. Who else fighter, I can say? I was always uh, very attracted to, like, the uh, O'Malley or Adesanya type of uh, fight style. Okay, you like the long, lanky guys. Uh, the very unorthodox yeah, striking yeah, yeah. stuff, yeah, you know? But the, the most... Think most people don't understand they are very precise that's why they get to drop people very easily so fuck it's, yeah they make it look so simple you know yeah they're, they're not like heavy punchers and you, you know? get people doing like this doing this stuff things in, in gyms all over yeah but they they aren't the same are they, they aren't snipers same. they have you know? more how they say they're more resilient with it that's me that's people like me like, trying to do all those stuff <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that's another thing that we have a problem right people watch a lot of things then they yeah. don't want to work what's best for them you you how, how has your fight style um, evolved, man? So, I knew a lot of things because I've been training with a lot of people. I All used to over, try, bro. Yeah, and then I was like, I was trying to incorporate a lot of people's style. I was not being me. Then finally, now I understood what I want the most and what, I work with very it? simple purpose. What, what, what is what, it? Yeah, what is it that you are trying to... What do you I wanna... try to keep a very simple, clean boxing. Yeah. And then you I You like those to, overhands or... Uh, I used to. Now I focus on my right hand, straight right hand, mm. straight right hand. Every now and then I throw a looping overhand yeah. or a left hook, and then whenever I can disengage and go into an underhook, I keep and I do some dirty boxing there. Yeah. And then and if I'm far away, I do calf kicks, yeah. calf kicks, low kicks, inside kicks. But what's crazy is your, you don't throw them often, but your high, high kicks land, bro. Yeah. Your combinations. Yeah, high kicks is is my favorite. Straight right hand. Yeah. High kick follow up by the back. But but I feel like. They are very successful because people are afraid of your takedown. Yeah. Yeah. You can distract them with it. And I only throw it like at the end of the round or like Mm. closer to finishing the fight. Yeah, that's what I noticed. You you don't just spam the 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 kicks. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The very simple three, four things and then be most repeat repetitive of it. Bro, if you had to um just differentiate uh, the difference in caliber, like why like what the gyms here are doing compared to the the top gyms in America, what is it about their training that is the big difference with, between why like one is more elite? I wouldn't say it's elite. Mm. I would say they are more consistent mm. in terms of everything. And they don't try to cloud chase things. It's like, let's just say we are doing... We're working on left hook, right hand. Yeah. They'll be doing it until it's like they can hit it on practice. They can hit it on everyone. You know, like if I would do, if I teach you left hook, right hand, I would make you do it on me eventually. You start doing on him first, a guy who never trains, do it on the back a couple of times, do it on a guy on the same level as you, eventually you should be hitting it on me. Okay. So that's the kind of consistency you need to have. Then you also need to have a structure for that. Then you also need to have like a, like a system for you to train that. So like I will put you against a guy and say, hey man, look, you only can throw left hook, right hand. That guy can throw everything. Then I got to test your emotions a little See bit. See whether you can land those, yeah, those combinations. Yeah. And, and, and I have to put you in situations like, oh, I back you up against the cage. And you try to do it from there. And I have to put you in situations more where More specific like, also. More specific, yeah. Okay. But you have to be consistent with the same thing. You're trying to repeat the same thing. So you build good muscle memory. And by the time you reach a certain level... You hit it, pom pom. Then you look elite. Yeah. That's where your elite comes from at the yeah. end of the day. So clean, huh? Yeah. Yeah. No Most cuts. of the things I do, like my takedowns and everything, I've been repeating it since the day one of practice. Like first day I came into monarchy until now. It's been 10 years ago. Yeah, and I still do the same as double leg, same X, body lock, far side leg hook, and I yeah. take the guy down, mount, 
punch, back yeah. take, choke. <laughs> Only uh, it's, it's smoother now and cleaner. Yeah, <laughs> it looks better, lah. Yeah. Okay. And also, I have experience hitting it on more experienced guys, so I understand how people will react towards it. Okay. Ah, uh, all right, bro. This is the last question, lah. No? Good. <laughs> um, advice to eighteen-year-old Agilan Tani. I <laughs> don't know, bro. Same shit, I guess. Whatever I've done so far, good ready, ma. Do some more. La. I agree with you, bro. Yeah, there's nothing else to do. Eh? Yeah, bro. I, um, you're the first guest that said that. Um, but you're someone who, you seem like you were on the right path even at that age already, lah, bro. Yeah, because I maybe had people around me who wanted yeah. to do. You were never a bad kid, right? Were you? No, Naughty ma. kid. Oh. Gangster. I or... used to think I was a bad kid because I used to watch porn, but and then. <laughs> The <laughs> the psychologists say you're not because my ex thought he watching told the porn. psychologist the, the, yeah the psychologist the mental coach is watching what? porn because I was like because my ex right she was like oh you are watching porn it's not the good Chinese for girl you. yeah the Chinese yeah, lady they all like that man yeah and then he was like <laughs> then <laughs> I was like I was like so like mentally drained when I broke up with my girl, uh, yeah. ex girlfriend and I went to the say is watching porn a bad thing did I really betrayed her. It's like no porn is a way to stimulate yourself from wanting what you actually want, and then I was like, oh, she said it like that lah. But I don't know what she mean. I, I, bro, and in today's age, right? If you don't watch porn, I'd be worried about you. Yeah, I feel so too. Yeah, it's the truth, lah, dude. I, I, I started to watch porn to a point like now I start to think like, oh, actually, watching porn is way more better than being a player. What, yeah, you're just okay. playing with yourself. You're not playing with other people's feelings. Yes. Uh, um, don't take our advice, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I'm married now, so I can't do. I can watch porn. My wife's okay with it. <laughs> Dude, but and the truth is also right. Um, I'm sure, uh, even though they they will never admit it, a lot of girls watch porn too. Oh really? I don't yeah. know. A, a lot of them watch porn. They just won't admit it. Okay, my maybe wife, not in our country. My wife watched the hentai stuff, like the uh, animation. More soft, like, More yeah. uh, more storyline. You know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think it's weird, lah. But yeah. it's okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, all right, guys. If you've watched up till this point, okay, it's been an hour and forty-five minutes. Um, you have to definitely be a fight fan, man. If not, you're not gonna stay up till this long. We went all the way in depth. Okay, I don't get to do this often to talk about fights or something that I'm so passionate about for the whole podcast. Um, really, really enjoyed this episode. You've never been on a podcast, right, bro? No, it's my first podcast, bro. Guys, okay. Um, people who who know of Agilan, who want to hear the whole story, um, his whole career in depth as well. I'm so glad that you told your whole journey here today, bro. Um, Are you a friend? No, I'm not gonna... <laughs> I, <laughs> later. <laughs> uh, do me a favor, guys. If you enjoyed the episode, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, put your thoughts in the comments, okay? If you want to see more MMA guests on the on the podcast do let me know i'll be happy to speak to more people and honestly i'll if if it were possible right dude i would i would love to grow mme content in malaysia you know it's, not, right? it, it would be really uh, great like to be able to talk about this more um and to be able to share this with more people who are passionate about this sport and guys give it up for agilan tani thanks guys see you all in the next episode Ciao. Woke up, I ain't got a job, okay Don't know what day of the week, okay Drop a new hit with the squad, okay Do it and go back to sleep, okay, okay.